hello everyone and welcome to today's video as the title of this video suggests today we are going to see how we can bypass ssl pinning in android so basically android apps make use of networking to interact with the server in order to send or retrieve the information right and to prevent these network requests made by the app from being intercepted ssl pinning is used now why this is important is because if the app is not using the ssl pinning then any attacker can easily intercept these network requests to steal sensitive information and on top of that an attacker can even modify the parameters during this network request uh, to provide false information to the server and to the end user now before continuing if you enjoy the video at any point or you find it interesting please let me know in the comment if you are new here and you are interested in more such content then i invite you to subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications so that you don't miss any new content having said that are you ready to discover how to defeat certificate pinning in android so let's begin if we go into the basics first we need to understand what is a tls certificate and how does it work all right so tls stands for transport layer security it's a protocol that establishes an encrypted session between two computers on the internet and it verifies the identity of the server and prevents hackers from intercepting any data to accomplish this task, TLS uses digital certificates known as TLS certificates, right? These TLS certificates are digital files used to certify the ownership of a public key. They are issued by a certificate authority that signs them, certifying that they have been verified and they belong to the owner of the domain. So in order to understand this concept better, we have a diagram over here. On the left hand side you can see we have our client and on the right hand side we have our server. When a client contacts a secured website, the server shares its TLS certificate with the client and this TLS certificate also contains the public key of the server. Okay. The client then verifies if it trusts that certificate and if so, then it sends back a symmetric session key which is encrypted using the public key of the server which was extracted from this TLS certificate okay then finally the server decrypts this session key using its own private key and then it sends back an acknowledgement to the client encrypted with this session key and now the two parties can communicate via this secure channel but now the question arises here is how this client decides whether to trust this certificate or not so for that in every device there is a list of pre-installed CA certificates and in Android also we can see this list so over here I have my Android device connected to the system and we can see this uh, pre-installed certificate list by going into the settings and here by searching trusted credentials and if we go into the trusted credentials we can see we have two tabs over here one is system and other one is user and under system we can see the list of ca certificates which are pre-installed in this device right and then under the user tab we can see currently it's empty um, and this tab will contain the list of ca certificates which are explicitly installed by the user okay so when a tls certificate has to be verified the client first checks that the certificate is still valid or not and that the chain of trust is intact so first of all here we need to understand two things one is what is chain of trust and other one is what is a ca certificate so in short you can consider certificate authority as a well reputed entity which is responsible for issuing retaining and revoking the certificates over insecure networks okay as i have just mentioned when a client visits a website or call any api which uses ssl connection the site or the server sends a digitally signed certificate now the client here compares this issued certificate with a list of trusted ca which it already has which i have just showed you in the android device now the other thing is that the certificate authorities don't issue end user certificates from their root certificate because it's too much of a security risk so that's why ca uses their roots to sign and issue an intermediate certificate all right which are then used to sign the end user certificate so basically here um, at the top level we have a root certificate uh, which is used to sign an intermediate certificate and then this intermediate certificate is used to sign the end user certificate which is finally exchanged with the client so the client then checks the issuer certificate with the already trusted ca certificate it has and if a match cannot be found 
then the client checks to see whether a trusted root ca signs the issuing ca certificate or issuer of the issuing certificate and so on so this way the chain of trust works and if a match is found then the client continues creating the encrypted connection otherwise it closes it immediately now obviously the entire process is a bit more complicated than what i have explained but this should be sufficient in order to bypass ssl pinning now in order to intercept the https request exchange between the client and the server we need to perform man in the middle attack as you can see here we have our android device on the left hand side and on the right hand side we have the server and the android device or the client communicates or exchange data with the server through the established secure channel right but for an attacker in order to intercept this network traffic he or she first need to set up a proxy server and redirect all the traffic from the client to that proxy server and vice versa so we have our client which is our android device here connected and we have the uh, server somewhere in the cloud sitting and running uh, hosting our apis right now all we need to do is to set up a proxy in between so that whenever this android device tries to communicate with the cloud server instead of directly sending the request to the server it will first redirect it to our proxy server and then we will forward it to the desired location and this way we should be able to intercept the network traffic so in order to configure our proxy server i am going to use burp suit community edition because it's free to use so we have our burp suit running now let's select temporary project click next use burp defaults and start the project once the temporary project is created uh, you will be able to see this kind of interface now we can simply go into the proxy tab over here go into the options and we need to edit this proxy listeners let's click edit and then over here you can choose the port to which you want the proxy server to listen to so i am leaving it as 8080 and then i want to listen from all the interfaces so that's why i'm going to select all interfaces hit ok yes and now our proxy listeners are configured properly and we should be able to see the network traffic under our http history tab but wait we are missing something here our android device is still not yet configured uh, to redirect the traffic to this proxy server right so for that we need to first configure the proxy in our device for that we can go to the wi-fi settings so this is the wi-fi name to which i am connected to if i go into the settings click on this edit button advanced option here we should be able to see the proxy which is none as of now so click on manual and now it's asking us the proxy host name and the proxy port so the proxy port uh, we have just selected as 8080 right and the proxy host name would be the ip address of our proxy server so by going into the terminal and typing if config so this is the ip of my proxy server on which the burp suit is running so i can simply put 192.168.1.110 let's save it and now if we try to open up our browser and go to google it says that your connection is not private and in the dashboard we can see that the client failed to negotiate a tls connection now this is happening because of ssl and in the error you can see that it's saying the certificate authority is not valid because the certificate uh, which this browser is expecting in order to connect to google.com is not the one which is from google.com domain because our device now is not connected to google.com instead it is connected to our proxy server and our proxy server obviously doesn't have the google ca certificates right so to fix this issue what we can do in your browser address bar simply type http burp hit enter and uh, you will be able to see this page then on the top right corner you can see this ca certificate right click on this one and this will download a certificate on your device now let's go to the file manager into the downloads we can see this cs certificate.der file which is just downloaded we need to rename it extension 2.der because that's what the android certificate installer recognizes then we need to go back to the settings under trusted credentials Uh, and then under the user tab 
we can see as of now we don't have anything right so we need to install a certificate ca certificate install it anyway and now under the downloads we need to select that certificate which we have just renamed which is this csr.cer click on it and you can see that ca certificate is installed and now if we go back to the trusted credentials under the user tab we can see that we have a port swigger certificate installed right and now if we open up our browser and try to open google it's working and in the http history tab in the burp suit you can see that it's able to intercept all the traffic from this device right so now the basic setup is done our android device is connected to our proxy server let's close it let me clear this history and in order to demonstrate SSL pinning bypass in, in Android applications, uh, I have a demo app here. So let's quickly install it using ADB install app release. And the application is installed in our device. We can see that now we have this SSL pinning demo application. Let's launch it. And here you can see all different type of pinning used in this application if we try to click on this unpinned request we can see that it's throwing ssl handshake exception error for config pin request also for okay http volley trustkit even manually pin request okay so on, only manually pin request is working as of now and all other requests are failing because of ssl handshake exception right this sample application is from http toolkit repository and the reason why I have chosen this demo application is because it is having all these different type of uh, pinning implemented which is a good way to showcase how we can bypass all these different type of pinning because you might encounter these different pinning in different applications and the github repository I will put in the description so you can download this application from there if you want to try it by yourself now in order to bypass all these pin requests we are going to use Frida hooking framework in order to hook the classes responsible for SSL pinning to bypass the checks, right? But I'm not going to write it manually because we have the scripts available on the Frida code share site. So if we go into the browse code, here we have Frida multiple unpinning. This is developed by AKA Bell and it's a very good SSL unpinning script which, which involves a lot of different ways to perform SSL unpinning, right? As you can see in, from this script, uh, it has OK HTTP bypass, trust kit bypass, trust manager implementation bypass and many more. So I'm going to just copy this script and I'm going to launch my Visual Studio over here i am going to create pinning.js and i am going to paste the code right now from this ui we can see that it is having ok http volley trusted configuration pinning so it doesn't have the flutter pinning so we can remove this part so simply we can remove all the unnecessary classes and code in order to just simplify the script so all this is not needed on script certificate pinning manager okay this might be required all right so now we have simplified this script somewhat and let's save it and from the terminal let's try to spawn the application using this script we first need to know the package name of this application right so for that i'm going to use apk tool in order to decompile this apk file ls so now we have this app release folder if we go inside it we have the android manifest so let's see what's in this and inside this the package name is this one tech.http demo let's copy it let's go back to the visual studio and let's try to launch the application using freda hyphen u for usb because our android device is connected to the system through the usb cable then hyphen l to list our unpinning script then hyphen f and then the package name which is tech.http toolkit.pinning underscore demo let me bring up our device on top of the screen and hit enter and as you can see it says fail to spawn need gadget to attach on shield and write okay this error came because we have uh, not started our Frida server on the device for that we need to go into adv shell we need to be root user then i have copied the data server inside data local temp directory 
we can launch the server using dot slash server hit enter so now our frida server is running let's try to launch it again hit enter our application is spawned successfully using our run pending script and in the console log we can see that the script tried to hook some classes as of now it's not able to find any class or method from the ok http library similarly from the trusted library also it's not able to find anything right so if you remember earlier when we launched the application without FIDA, all these requests were not working except the last one. Now, after using this bypass script, uh, let's see whether we are able to intercept these requests or not. So, if I click on the unpinned request, the script tried to hook on to the trust manager implementation in order to bypass the SSL pinning check. And uh, we can see it turned green, which means uh, the API request is successful in our verb let e, what do we have so we have the intercepted network request which is this one so the host it's trying to access is http toolkit.com right this is the request payload and this is the response so in this case it's just a simple html page so that's what we are getting in the response right similarly let's try config pin request and yes we are able to intercept this as well now right in this case it tried to access this as ha256 pad ssl.com then for ok http uh, we can see that this is still not working and we are getting this exception so if you remember from the console log we can see that the script was not able to find any classes from the ok http library right but this particular script why i have chosen this one is uh, because uh, this script is implemented very cleverly so what it does basically is whenever it is not able to find the exact class responsible for the ssl pinning check uh, from the exception it tries to backtrace the function which is responsible for the ssl pinning check and then perform the hook over there so that's what it did here exactly you can see that uh, it the script was able to identify that sslp unverified uh, exception occurred then it tried to patch it dynamically from the backtrace it was able to figure out that the method responsible for ssl pinning check is from f dot f dot a class right and to show you this implementation in the script over here you can see that it hooked onto this sslp unverified exception class and this is the exact message you are seeing in the console right now right whenever this exception generated this particular implementation will be executed instead of executing the original one and inside this um, the script is trying to get a backtrace or the stack trace and from the stack trace it tried to find the class matches this one ssl peer and verified exception and from this class it tried to get the method name and if this method name is already hooked then it will simply return otherwise it tried to extract the return type of the method and then applied a rudimentary fix so inside this rudimentary fix method uh, we can see that it tried to check the return type parameter so if the return type is undefined then it will simply return if the return type is boolean then it will always return true otherwise it will return null now mostly how the ssl pinning logic works is inside the android application if the certificate is trusted by the android device then it returns true otherwise it returns false so here um, in this case uh, irrespective of whether the certificate is trusted or not it will always return true and in this way we can bypass the ssl pinning checks so now let's go back to our device let's hit this ok http pin request again and let's see and this time we can see that it worked and in our verb suit also uh, we got the request great similarly for the volley pin request we are able to see and intercept the request and response parameters for the trust kit pin request also we are able to intercept it and uh, for the manually pin request also it's working right so that's how you can bypass different type of ssl pinning used in the android application and you can modify this script as per your needs it's completely up to you so that's all i wanted to cover in this video and if you liked it and found it useful then don't forget to like share and subscribe